Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Mysterious Traveler, written, produced, and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Cogan, and starring tonight two of radio's foremost personalities, Adelaide Klein and Mason Adams, in an original radio drama titled The Visiting Corpse. <laughs> This is the mysterious traveler inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, that it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves and be comfortable, if you can, as we meet the visiting corpse. begins late one night in the modest suburban home of Albert Jordan. Albert, a mild-looking man in his early thirties, is tossing restlessly in his sleep. Now and then he moans and speaks as if having a nightmare. No. No, leave me alone. I don't want to hear anymore. Leave me alone. Can't pull the wool over my eyes, Albert Jordan. No. I'm on to your way. I think my only child was foolish enough to elope with you. Oh. Poor Louise. Oh. There were so many men eager to marry her, oh. and she had to be tricked into marriage by you. Oh, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Darling, wake up. What, what, what is it? What is it? What? Oh. Oh, Louise. Oh, you were having a nightmare, dear. Oh. You don't want to wake Mother up. She needs a good night's sleep for a trip home tomorrow. Yes, the trip. We we mustn't let her miss her train. We mustn't be here. Albert, whatever in the world is wrong with you? Nothing. Only I wish you were already tomorrow and she were gone. You sure you have everything, Mother? Yes, Louise, dear. Now, don't forget to ship my trunk. Well, the express man will be here to pick it up this morning, Mother. Thank you, darling. It's uh, almost 9 o'clock, Mother. You'll miss your train. I have never missed a train in my life. You needn't be so anxious to get rid of me, Albert. Oh, oh Louise, darling, I do hate leaving you alone like this. Really, Mother? I'll be all right. Very well, then. If you say so, I'll go. But I'll be writing to you every day. And if... If he abuses you, just just let me know. Goodbye, darling. <laughs> Goodbye, Mother, and take care of yourself. Uh, and don't forget, Louise. Mother will come back if you need her. Yes, Mother. Goodbye. Louise, if your mother pays us just one more visit, I'll leave this house and I'll never come back. But, darling, it's only natural that Mother should want to visit me. I'm the only one she has in the world. Yes, but she doesn't just visit us. She lives with us. In the past year, she spent eight months with us. She has her clothes here, a key to the house. Well, she's even listed in the phone book under our number. Please, Albert, she's gone now. Let's not quarrel. Yeah, she's gone now, but in two or three weeks, you can be sure she'll come back to spend a few months with us. I'm warning you, Louise. I won't be responsible for what happens if she keeps coming back. Send off the trunk. Well, that's one job I can enjoy doing. Mrs. Heather Roden, 125 River Road, Ferndale, Pennsylvania. Oh, that won't be necessary, Albert. What? My trunk can remain here. Mother, but you want to catch your train. I've changed my mind about going. I won't leave my little girl alone. I'm sure she needs me. Where is Louise? She, she went downtown. Oh, So you've come back again. You've always wanted to get rid of me, haven't you, Albert? To keep me away from my only child. But I refuse to give her up. I've come back and I'm staying for good. You're what? Yes, and then I'll be sure that Louise is being well treated. Frankly, I don't trust you. You don't trust me? No. Why, I I don't even know your background. You were a complete stranger when you forced poor Louise to elope with you a year ago. And for all I know, you you, you may have criminal tendencies. There's a certain amount of the criminal in all of us. Most people can control their worst instincts. But some can't. Exactly. 
And I'm here to see to it that no one harms Louise. But who's going to look out for you, Mother? Albert, why are you looking at me so queerly? I, are you sick? Yes, Mother, I'm sick. Sick of the sight of you. No, Albert, you must control yourself. I, I, I want you to go to your room at once and lie down. So you had to keep coming back, Mother, and keep giving me orders. Albert, stop looking at me that way. What? You seem like another person. I am, Mother. You wouldn't let what was decent in me live, and now you must take the consequences. Albert, stay away from me. Don't you dare come near me. You would keep coming back, Mother, when you came back just once too no, often. Albert, don't take me, Albert. You should have taken that train, Mother. But at least now I know you won't be coming back. You won't come back ever again. You won't. You won't. I didn't want to kill you. But you made me. I've got to get rid of her. They'll catch me. The trunk. Yes, it's large enough. The keys. Here in her handbag. Even in death, you're a problem, Mother. But you won't be for long. Uh, there. Now I'll just pack this clothing around you tightly. Uh, that does it. Now I'll have to get rid of the trunk. Albert, what? are you home? Louise, the trunk, I've got to get it closed. Is that you, Albert? Yes, dear. Oh, I see you're locking the trunk. Yes, I, uh, I was getting it ready for the express man. It should be here now. Uh, Albert, is anything wrong? Well, what do you mean, Louise? I don't know. Your face is so flushed. It's uh, just a little warm in here, that's all. Look, we forgot to pack Mother's robe. I know she'll want it. I'm afraid you'll have to open the trunk again, Albert. No. I mean, I mean, the, the trunk is full already. We, we couldn't get anything else in it. Oh, nonsense. When Mother and I packed, it was only half full. Please open but, it. But it's locked, and, and, and your mother has the keys. Oh, yes, you're right. Well, we'll just have to mail the robe to her. I'll answer the door. It must be the expressman. Make sure the tags are on it, dear. Tags? I can't go to her home. Only I had time to think. Wait. Yes, that's the only thing to do. I'll make out new tags. The expressman's backing his truck up the door, Albert. Have you got the tags already? I'm just finishing them. Yeah. They're all ready, dear. Well, let me see if you have the address right. Sometimes you're so forgetful. Now, Louise, you needn't bother. Of course, the tags are made out right now. Stand aside. I'll carry the trunk to the door. Well, let the expressman do it, Albert. That's what he's being paid for. And I really do want to check the address on the tag. Now, Louise. Oh, please, Albert. I'm just playing safe. But these tags are addressed to Mrs. William Smith, 345 Wood Street, Las Vegas. They are? They certainly are. What were you thinking of? I, 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 I don't know, Louise, but I'll, I'll change them. You, you, you just go on and let me tend to it. Indeed I will not. You let the expressman in and I'll tend to the tag. If I left it to you, Mother's trunk would probably go heaven knows where and never be found again. <laughs> Worried, Louise? So weak now, and no word from Mother. She said she'd write every day. Nah, dear, maybe she's been too busy to write. She's busy? You know Mother doesn't do anything. No, no, there's something wrong. I feel Well, you mustn't worry, Louise. I'm sure that she's all right. Oh, I'll, I'll answer. Now, I'll come with you. Maybe it's a special delivery letter from Mother. Good morning. I got a trunk for you folks. Why, it's Mother's trunk. Why, is it? You've always watched get rid of me, Albert, to keep me away from my only child. But I refuse to give her up. I've come back, Albert, and I'm staying for good. No, no. What'd you say, Albert? Hey, nothing. Hey, lady, the trunk. Oh, bring it in, won't you, please? Okay. Uh, uh. <clears throat> there you are. I don't understand. Why should Mother send her trunk back to us? Would you mind signing for Mr. Jordan? Uh, oh, yes, yes, all right. Here you are. Thanks. Bye. Well, but I, I can't understand why Mother shipped her trunk back to us, and without even writing a word about it. Well, I'm going to put an end to this guessing. What are you going to do? I'm calling Mother. Hello, operator. I want to put through a call to Ferndale, Pennsylvania. The number's 223. 
Yes, that's right. My number's Riverdale 7745. Thank you. Why bother phoning, Louise? I'm sure there's a letter on the way. I've waited long enough for one. Albert, why do you keep staring at the trunk so? What? Uh, oh, was I? What's wrong with you, Albert? This past week you've been so jumpy. Oh, hello? Hello, Sarah. This is Louise calling. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Is my mother there? What? Are you sure? So that's why you shipped the trunk pack? No. No, thank, thank you, Sarah. Albert, Sarah says that mother never arrived home. She hasn't been there this past week. Was Sarah the one who shipped the trunk pack? Yes. She thought mother decided to stay with us longer and need her clothes. Albert, where can she be? Oh, Louise, I'm sure that she's all right. All right, she's been missing a week. How could she be? I'm going to call the police. Oh, Albert, where can she be? 24 hours have gone by and the police still haven't found her. Oh, now, dear, it takes time. You must have patience. They're doing everything they can. I suppose... I suppose she's dead. You mustn't talk like that. Nothing is known yet. Why, why do you keep staring at her trunk? I don't know. Darling, it, it just upsets you to see the trunk. It keeps reminding you of your mother. I, I'd better put it in storage. All right, Albert. Do as you please. Now you're being sensible, dear. I'll take good care of mother's trunk. That very afternoon, Albert took the trunk to the express office. He shipped it away again, this time to a non-existent address in California. He also gave a false return address, so he was quite sure it would never come back to bother him again. Look, darling, I've brought you some flowers. Here's a little present. Thank you, Al. Very nice. Louise, your mother has been missing five weeks. Now, you can't go on this way. You'll have a nervous breakdown. Al, but where can she be? Why can't the police find her? Darling, if she hasn't been found in five weeks, I'm afraid there's no hope. Louise, you must resign yourself to her loss. Oh, I'll I'll answer, dear. You just sit here and rest. All right, Al. Yes? Good evening. I got something here which I believe belongs to you. Belongs to me? Yes. A trunk. A trunk? Yes. Yeah. Ever since it came into the depot a couple of days ago, I've been trying to locate the owner, and uh, <laughs> I've been having quite a time of it. Did a little checking and figured out it might be yours. You've always wanted to get rid of me, Albert, to keep me away from my only child, but I refuse to give her up. I've come back, Albert. Do you uh, recognize it? No. No, don't, don't you know... Where the trunk goes? Uh, well, no. It's uh, come all the way back from California. Seems there wasn't any such address where this here uh, was shipped to. Surely it had a return address. Yeah, but the rain kind of washed it off. Until all you can make out now is Riverdale, New York. Well, what What makes you think it belongs here? Well, <laughs> I sort of did a little detective work. The initials stamped on the trunk are H-L-R, and I looked it up in the phone book, and the only person in Riverdale with those initials lives here. I'm sorry, but you must have the wrong place. Where where will you take the trunk now? Oh, it'll be put with unclaimed luggage. Then in a few months, it'll be sold for charges, unopened. Sold for charges? Yeah. yeah. You'd be surprised what you sometimes find in unclaimed trunks. Sort of like a grab bag game. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to have trouble. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, what, 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 what did you say those initials were? H-L-R. H-L-R. Mm -hmm. oh, why, they're my mother-in-law's initials. How stupid of you. Oh, but, well, you just said it wasn't your trunk. Well, it isn't. It's hers. Her name is Heather L. Roden. Yeah, yeah that was the only name in the phone book with those initials. That's why I come here. Well, it was an extremely clever piece of detective work. Um, I, I suppose there's a collect charge on the trunk. Yep. Comes to thirty-one fifty with the trucking. Well, I'll just put the trunk inside for you. Thank you. Well, we'd have hated to lose the trunk. Here's uh, thirty-five dollars to keep the change. Oh, say, thanks. Uh, good night. Good night. So you've come back again, as you said you would. Well, you haven't beaten me yet. Ah, but who was it? Why, not a trunk. I thought it was in storage. Well, it, it was, dear, but they're closing the storage house. They brought it back. Oh, I see. 
Looks rather worn now, doesn't it? Albert, how do we know there isn't a letter or something in the trunk that would give us a clue to Mother's disappearance? Now, Louise, you know that's ridiculous. There's nothing in that trunk but clothes. Oh, probably right, Albert, but just the same, I'm going to open it. But you haven't got the key to it. No, but I have half a dozen old keys on this ring. Possibly, just possibly, one of them might open the trunk. Well, uh, here, let me have the keys. I'll, I'll see if I can open it for you. Oh, thank you, dear. Here you are. Just a waste of time, but if it'll make you feel better. Uh, 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 one doesn't work. Uh, huh? No, nope, nor does this one. Why, Albert, you're not even really trying. Here, let me... I tell you, it's no use. Well, let me try for myself. Oh, no, this key doesn't... Well, I told you so. Now, why don't you give up? Oh, this one doesn't either. You're only wasting your time. No, this one isn't any good. Perhaps this one will do it. Oh, no. None of these keys will open it. But in the morning, I'm going to get a locksmith to open it. I've got to see what's in that trunk. Perhaps it'll lead to our finding mother. So she's going to get a locksmith in the morning, is she? Well, you won't be here when he comes. I'll see to that. You've always wanted to get rid of me, Albert. To keep me away from my only child. But I refuse to give her up. I've come back, Albert, and I'm staying for good. You're not, do you hear? You're not. You'll never come back after tonight. Never. Pardon me, miss, but you store trunks here, don't you? Why, yes, sir. This is the largest storage house in New York. Do you wish to store that trunk you just brought in? Yes, please. Um, may I uh, have your name? Williams. John Williams. And the address? 313 Maple Street. Mm-hmm. What city, please? Uh, uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Mm, okay. Now, the charge for the trunk will be $4 a month. How many months do you uh, want to store it? How many months? Well, let me see how much money I have. I've only $8 with me. Well, that'll pay for two months, then. If you want to keep it here longer, you can mail us your check. Yes, I'll do that. Okay. Here's your receipt, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> And so Albert got rid of the embarrassing trunk at last. For there was only one little hitch. Before he could send any more money, he lost the storage receipt, and he forgot the false name he'd given the storage people, so he couldn't pay for additional storage. But he knew they'd keep it at least a year. He was quite sure that it could never, could never be traced back to him. So after a few months, he stopped worrying. Good evening, dear. How are you? I'm all right, Al. Fine. Say, I, um, I bumped into George Horton and his wife on the way home, and they asked us to come to a charity auction that's being held tonight. That was very nice of them, Al. Why don't we go, dear? Do you a lot of good. You haven't been anywhere for six months now. I know, Albert, and I've been unfair to you, haven't I? You haven't seen anyone in six months yourself. All right, if you like, I'll go to the charity auction tonight. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what am I fit for this beautiful antique lamp? Do I have five dollars? Oh, come, come, ladies and gentlemen. Look closely at this work of art. Now, do I hear five dollars? I'll bid five dollars. Now, there we have a lady with a real sense of beauty. Now, do I hear six dollars? Good evening, George. Hello, Albert. I'm uh, glad that Louise and you came. Well, How are you, Louise? Quite well, thank you. It was nice of you to invite us here, George. Well, we've missed both of you quite a bit these past months. Well, I hope you'll be seeing more of us. You know, you've got quite a crowd here tonight. Yes, we hope to raise a good deal of money. You know, that auctioneer is a genius. He can sell the most useless objects, make it seem valuable. <laughs> well, we'll have to get in on the bidding. Hey, wait till you see the next item he puts up for sale. It's something I donated. It's going to be quite a surprise. You are all as good at that, George. <laughs> Come on, let's move a little closer. The auctioneer. Do I hear twelve? Do I hear twelve? All right, I've got eleven dollars. Well, you're going to let this remarkable lamp go for as little as eleven dollars. All right, it's your last chance, ladies and gentlemen. Going at eleven dollars once. 
Going twice. Sold to the German in the tweed suit. And very fortunate he is. <laughs> that lamp couldn't have cost more than $3 when it was new. <laughs> oh, now here comes something for sale that I donated. All right, ladies and gentlemen. The, uh, the next item for sale is something so good heh, that I'm tempted to enter in the bidding myself. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my, uh, my assistant will remove that cutter. And there. There you have the next bargain. A locked trunk. All right, ladies and gentlemen, study it well. Study it well, ladies and gentlemen. I'll give you a few minutes. Then we'll start the bidding. The trunk. No. No, it can't be. Yet it's the same size. It's the same color. The initials. The initials, that'll prove what it... No. No, they seem to have been rubbed off. You've always wanted to get rid of me, Albert keep me away from my only child. But I refuse to give her up. I've come back, Albert, and I'm staying for good. You are back. When I didn't send them any more money, they sold the trunk for charges. Yes, I've come back, Albert, and I'm staying for good. All right, here we are. Now, this is no ordinary trunk, ladies and gentlemen. It was donated to this auction by Mr. George Horton, who bought it at a storage house. He, he never broke the lock to examine the content, uh, preferring to save that wonderful surprise for the person who purchases this remarkable trunk tonight. All right, who knows what it contains? Perhaps the crown jewels of Russia. Or, uh, better still, is five quarts of scotch. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, now we'll start the bidding for this mystery trunk. I'll bid $20. $20? Why, madam, this trunk, the trunk alone is worth 40 Who knows what's in it? I've come back, Albert. And I'm staying for good. No, no. Albert, you look so pale. Is there anything wrong? Huh? What? Oh, no, no. Everything's all right. Oh, come, come, ladies and gentlemen. The contents of this trunk may be priceless. Do I hear a bit of $30? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm just as curious as everyone else to know what's in that trunk. I'll bid $30. Now, uh, we have a bit of $30 from Mr. Horton, the gentleman who donated this mystery trunk. All right, do I hear $40? Albert... That trunk looks something like Mother's, doesn't it? So you've noticed. Surely I hear $40 why any dealer would pay $40 for the trunk alone. That means you'd have the contents for free. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, do I hear $40? $40? Ah, there's a lady with a shrewd eye for a bargain. All right, hold bid $50. I'll say $50. But, Albert, we don't need a trunk. <laughs> oh, let him have fun, Louise. After all, it is for charity. Besides... <laughs> you can never tell what's in the trunk. I wish I could bid on this myself, ladies and gentlemen. I now have a bid of $50, which I am convinced is only one-tenth the true value of this trunk. All right, do I hear $60? $60! $70! That's more like it. Now, do I hear $80? $80! $100! Ah, you people are beginning to show real appreciation for this trunk. Who'll make it $110? $110! $120! Do I hear $130? $130! $150! Fun, fun, Albert, but you're going too hard. Leave me alone. Albert, what's wrong with you? The gentleman has bid $150. Do I hear any more? Going once at $150. Going twice at $150. So, to that gentleman for $150. <laughs> I, I never saw anyone go after anything the way you went after that trunk, Albert. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid nothing will satisfy the crowd now but for you to open up the trunk and reveal what's in it. No, 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 I'm sorry, but I don't intend to open until I get home. No, 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 no! Come on, Albert, now don't spoil the fun. It won't hurt to open it. I told you I wouldn't do it! No, 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 I'm, 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 I'm sorry, George, but... Well, I, 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 I haven't a key to open it, and, and, and there's no sense in breaking the lock after... Paying $150 for the trunk. Well, uh, maybe I can help you, Mr. Mr. Horton. Uh, hmm? That's some skeleton keys that'll open any lock. Here, I'll show you. We auctioneers are always running into locked trunks. Oh, we'll certainly appreciate it. Yeah. I think this key will do it. Stop! What? You have no right to touch my trunk. I paid for it, and I don't want it open. Now, get away from it. It's mine. Albert, what's wrong with you? Well, all right, certainly. If that's the way you feel about it. Uh, 
Come on, Louie. We're going home. Oh, but you're acting so strangely. Why do you insist on dragging that trunk away now? Stop talking and come along. Well, all right, Al. Al, but that uh, that trunk is pretty heavy. Don't you want me to give you a hand with it? I can manage it alone, thank you. Open that door for me, Louise. Al, but don't you think you'd better let George help you get the trunk down those stairs? No, I'm not going to let anyone touch this trunk. You've always wanted to get rid of me, Al, but to keep me away from my only child. But I refuse to give her up. I've come back, Albert, and I'm staying for good. Albert, do be careful on those stairs. I've come back, Albert, and I'm staying for good. Be quiet, you old hag. Be quiet. You haven't defeated me yet. I'll get rid of you if it's the last thing I... Ah! What happened, my son? He lost his balance on the stairs. The trunk was too heavy for him. Oh, Albert, speak to me. Albert. George, do something. I'm sorry, Louise. I'm afraid he's gone. <laughs> trunk crushed his skull. Hey, yeah, look, Mr. Horton. Hmm? The fall broke the trunk open. <laughs> there was nothing in it but a load of books. <laughs> can't get away from. They keep coming back like an old refrain. Oh, well, Albert's now a free man. Unless, of course, he's being haunted on the other side. Now, I recall another case in which a young man who woke up to find himself dead decided that... Oh, you have to get off here. I'm sorry. But I'm sure we'll meet again. I take this same train... Every week at the same time. You have just heard The Mysterious Traveler, a series of dramas of the strange and terrifying. All characters in tonight's story were fictitious, and any resemblance to the names of actual persons was purely coincidental. In tonight's case were Maurice Toplin, Adelaide Klein, Mason Adams, Bill Keane, and Connie Lemke. Sound was by George Cooney, broadcast engineer Al King. Original music was played by Paul Taubman. The Mysterious Traveler is written, produced, and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Cogan. Listen next week to a tale titled Murder by Proxy. Another strange and suspenseful tale of the Mysterious Traveler. And now here's an announcement of interest to listeners of this program. Mysterious Traveler comic books are now available at newsstands everywhere. Carl Caruso speaking. This program came to you from our New York studios. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.